I want to show you one more thing which I promised, okay, uh, in the debugger. Let's now go back to refurbish uh, store class and let's look at this method here that we just developed. I want you to focus on this exit condition for the for loop, right? Why is this always the case that we only go up to by excluding the value of this.noe? In this case, what we are doing is we're saying NOE is actually three, right? Over here for the value three. And strictly less than NOE, that means we'll only go up to and including the value two. But we are not going for values three and four, uh, I mean indices. But why is that? Let's now experiment this together and then I might uh, uh, need to explain some explanation that you deserve. Okay, let's take a look. So rather than this dot NOE, let's try something that many of you might be wondering about whether you can do that or not. You are either a computer scientist or software engineer. So I think that both of you should be curious about what if you change this into something alternative. It might work or it may not, but in both cases, you should really understand why exactly. Okay, so rather than this dot NOE, I would say this dot entries dot length. So what this would, this is a very uh, conventional way, a standard way of going through an array, right? So what I'm saying here is rather than going up to only here, so the length of the uh, array would be five, one, two, three, four, five, strictly less than the length. So that would mean I'll go up to and including index four. What's going to happen if I do that, right? That's the question. Before I rerun the test cases, I would like to give you a little bit of exercise to, to try. You don't need to sketch anything you think, okay? If I change this to be the exit condition, and given that this is the code I'm going to execute for every iteration, am I going to run into any trouble at the runtime? That's a question. Pause the video and think about it. Assuming that you thought about it, let's now try. If I simply go back to test refurbished store, okay, and then I'll simply rerun the test case. If I do that, I got a red bar, all right? You see, I just made some changes to the units, namely uh, refurbished store, I, that I make a change, and I got a red bar. So that means whatever change I made actually caused some issue, okay? So this change specifically is really problematic because I got a red bar instead of a green bar. So there's something wrong with this. Let's try to find out. So whenever you got any failure for the JUnit test case, what should you do, right? I would suggest, first of all, see which test case it is failing, right? You can see exactly it's a refurbished store test two, okay? And then you can see at the top, null pointer exception. Null pointer exception typically occurs when you're trying to invoke a method on a context object, but the context object is actually null, right? That's uh, really what's happening here, right? Let me just be a little bit precise. So whenever you're trying to have some context object expression dot a method call, this will be a method call and this will be the context objects. Now pointer exception means the context object expression like a path over here is referring to something that's null. That's why it's null, null pointer exception. You simply just cannot invoke any attributes or methods on something that's null, right? So that's about null pointer exception. Let's see exactly how, right? You can definitely go into uh, the um, uh, go go to the uh, line over here. It tells you which line in the test case actually failed. If you double click on that, it tells you line number one hundred twelve. That's the first failure, right? So whenever you got any failure over here, I would suggest put a breakpoint over here right before you execute that line that caused the failure, and then you will uh, use the debugger, right? Let me show you how to do it. So you're going to actually launch the debugger over here, and then. I would say switch to the uh, debug perspective over here, right? Let me remove all the earlier expressions over here. Okay, so uh, I'll be clean over here. And of course, these are the earlier breakpoints that I set, right? What I can do is I can simply remove it. I can also remove it over here. I can also remove it and I can also remove it and etc. Okay, so I've removed them all. So now if I say step return, I'm now going to hit the newest uh, breakpoint that I set, right? Remember what a step return is about. I explained that earlier. Okay, let me say step return again, step return again, step return again. Okay, somehow it takes longer than I thought. Okay, just stop over here, that's fine. And let me close it, let me launch it again. So I will go directly to the breakpoint I just set, okay? If I say uh, debug, so now I'm here. 
right before I execute this line, which will cause the null pointer exception. Let's take a look. Let's analyze what's happening here. Well, you cannot have a null pointer exception by comparing references. So this part of the expression is not an issue, cannot be the issue, okay? And this one could be, it could be that RS might be null. In that case, invoking get products over there will result in some null pointer exception. But if you move your cursor over RS, it's actually okay. It does have some address over here, right? So RS is not a null pointer that we are talking about. So it's gotta be somewhere inside the get product method that actually cause this null pointer exception. So what we should do is rather than step over, if you, by the way, if you simply say step over, it's not gonna be very useful because you will, because you will simply execute a problematic line and you will simply get the null pointer exception. Typically, once you get an exception, you will go into uh, some, uh, some like a nowhere. In that case, you cannot continue anymore because you got a null pointer exception. So let me stop the debugger over here, right? I just show you what you should not do, right? And then let's launch the debugger once more by clicking on the bug button here. Okay, so what we should do is we should step into the get products method. Let me say step into, okay, right here. And apparently this line cannot be the cause of problem if there's no method call, right? And then I can go, okay, right before I start a loop. You can see over this fragment of code over here, do we have any method call? We do. In some way, this is more like a method call. But remember, this is a context object. Context objects, in this case, it would be uh, RS. And RS, we, also, we already verified that it cannot be null, right? So the other, another uh, method call would be like this. So now we got different uh, possibility. It could be that E over here might be null, in, in which case, calling get serial number on E, if E is null, we'll get a null pointer exception. That's possibility number one. Possibility number two, it could be that E is not null, but when we say E dot get serial number, the serial number itself is actually null. In that case, calling equals on something that's null will actually give you null pointer exception. So we got exactly two possibilities, but we don't know which one it is. So what I would suggest is, let's now go to expressions over here. So now we can simply put E over here. So E, uh, it doesn't uh, does not exist just yet, but because we still need to execute the line, right? And then we can say E dot get serial number over here. Okay, that's what we can do, right? If either this is null or this expression over here is null, at some point in the iteration, we will know that should be the uh, cause of the problem. Okay, let's now, let's now try to step over. And we can also put I over here so we can know which iteration we are in, right? Let's now step over to now start a loop. So now this will be the very first iteration where I is actually equal to zero, right? First iteration. As soon as I, uh, I execute the first line over here, I can see E over here got some ID and serial number also got some value over here. So none of them is null. So the first iteration is not a problem, okay? And then let me just now step over, step over. Okay, now I'm going for the second iteration, okay? And for the second iteration, E and serial number, they're both not null. So second iteration is not a problem, okay? And if I go over the rest of the uh, second iteration, now I can start a third iteration. For the third iteration, you can see E and also serial number, they are also not null. So third iteration is also not a problem either. So, so far, let me just go to the end. So now we are just about to start the fourth iteration. You can see so far, we are basically running index zero, index one, and index two, right? Entries are there, serial numbers are also there. So that, that's why they are not a problem, okay? As soon as I go to index four for the uh, index three for the fourth iteration, what what are we, uh, what are we going to get? If I say step over right now, and then you can see E over here is actually null. Why? E is assigned to this dot entries at index i. Index for the fourth iteration is three. So that means when I say rs dot entries at index three over here, that's really pointing to just null. Right? Can you actually invoke? Uh, can you? Uh, so E is actually null. So now, can you actually invoke get serial number on some null 
reference? The answer is no, you cannot. That's why you get into null pointer exception. So I hope this uh, detailed tracing over here is really giving you some inspiration about how you can really use the debugger to really find out the error. For all the earlier tracing on the debugger, I'm trying to show you uh, the, what the cor uh, correct behavior is. But right now I'm showing you some the behavior of some code that actually got some problem. In this case, it will cause some runtime null pointer exception. So that's how I found out the problem. Okay, so I know that because at this iteration over here, E will be null, right? Because it's now referring to this particular slot over here. So that means this index and including all the index onwards, they should not be even looked at in the first place, right? So that's why, how do I fix the code, right? What I will do is, so since I already know what the problem is, I'm going to stop the debugger and go back to the Java perspective. And now I know that this is actually problematic, right? So let me just uh, cut it. Okay, and then I will put a note for you. Problematic exit condition over here. Okay, I'll make a note so you can remember. And then uh, let me fix the typo quickly. I can put the original one. I strictly less than this dot noe, right? So that will be okay. And now if I rerun all the test cases, I still get a green bar. All right, so hopefully this uh, debugging session over here really gives you some idea about how useful debugger and breakpoints are. But it, it really takes some experience, but I would say you should really try out and get out of your comfort zone about not using a debugger, right? It's really worth uh, trying.